Hey friends, it's Mel. Happy New Year. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get back to some regular meals and get off of all this party food. So, sit back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking tonight. The first is a crock pot salsa taco chicken. I just made that name up because I wasn't exactly sure what to call this. But I am starting by spraying my crock pot with some nonstick spray. And I have three frozen chicken breasts that I'm putting inside here. And I have about a half a jar of salsa that I'm going to pour over the top of it. And then I'm going to take an envelope of taco seasoning and sprinkle that over the top. I just put the lid on it, put it on high, and let it cook about four hours. And then, voila, the chicken is done. All the seasonings are soaked right into it. And I just take my little meat chopper right in the crock pot and begin shredding it up. You can see what a good job that little meat tool does shredding meat as well as chopping it. Now my daughter and my husband wanted theirs quesadilla style so I just pulled out a skillet put down a flour tortilla and then covered it with cheese. I just took a little bit of the chicken and spread it out across that cheese. Then I topped it and just fried it up on both sides. I really set myself up to have plenty of easy meals the week of Christmas and after Christmas when I was going to be on vacation. I wanted to still have good food, but I wanted lots of crock pot meals. I had some easy things in the freezer that I could pull out and we could eat. I just wanted minimum work with maximum gain. And you know, that's the good thing about keeping a pantry like I talk about all the time and a freezer stocked with things that you know your family likes and things that you could pull out at a minute's notice and put a meal together. Now, I wanted mine more like a taco salad, so I just broke up some tortilla chips and then put me some of the salsa taco chicken over the top of the chips. I put a little bit of that shredded cheese over the top of mine and I used a Monterey and cheddar mix that I had or a Colby Monterey mix that I had. Then I came around with some shredded green leaf lettuce. Of course we have to have sour cream. And then I covered mine with some taco sauce. Now if I had had some red onion that would have been delicious on this but i did not have any you could also top it with beans you could pull out olives anything that you like in your mexican dishes but i just kept it very simple this night and it was delicious and just what we needed after eating all of the cheese balls and all that kind of stuff now i'm going to show you crock pot beef stew this could not be easier I've got a package of lean stew meat that I had in the freezer and I'm just going to brown that up on top of the stove. While I'm doing that, I'm going to take two cups of water and one packet of beef stew seasoning mix. Now it said to use three cups of water, but I didn't have but just maybe a pound of meat. That's why I held back and started with just two cups of water, but I do add another cup in later. And now I'm browning up that meat and I'm just giving it a little salt and pepper and I really didn't think about this beforehand so I had not thawed that meat out and I didn't even defrost it in the microwave or anything. I just put it in my skillet 
and let it kind of come apart and fry it up. Now I just poured a little bit of flour over this and I'm going to coat this meat in and it will sort of help it to get thicker in the crock pot whenever I add all the liquid it'll cook low and slow and that flour coating will help that beef stew to get thicker which is how I like mine. So once again, I have a sprayed crock pot and I'm just putting the meat that's browned up and the drippings and everything right down into the bottom of that crock pot. I even have a bag of frozen stew vegetables. It's potatoes and carrots, onion and celery. It's frozen, it's already chopped up. They have done all the work. And this was a 32 ounce bag and I started out just pouring a little bit in maybe half of it and then I thought you know I'm just gonna put all of it in um, I thought it could handle it that amount of meat I wasn't sure if the, that would be too many veggies but once I got to looking at it I realized I could just use the whole rest of that bag now I'm gonna pour over the seasoning mixture that I made up and this is when I decided I did want to use that extra cup of water because that didn't quite cover my vegetables and my meat like I wanted it to. So I'm going to go back in with another cup. Beef stew is such a hearty, yummy, easy meal and everything's in one pot. Your meat and your vegetables and um, you really don't have to have anything else to go along with this. and I put the lid on it and I let it cook all day long on low. I'm gonna make some cornbread in the evening here to go along with this and this is just southern cornbread recipe on the back of Martha White. I do make a few little additions. I do start out by putting my cast iron pan with some shortening in it in the oven to get heated and then I use one egg come back in with I believe it's about a cup and a third of milk then you use about a fourth a cup of oil and then I use two cups of the cornmeal mix and this is just a little fourth of a cup measuring spoon that I use in there so I have to use a lot of scoops of that and I always come back in with just a big spoonful of mayonnaise in my cornbread because that's what my mama always did. And I do like to put just a little bit of flour, self-rising is normally what I always have. I do like to put just a little bit of flour in my cornbread and helps it, you know, just puff up a little bit. And I love whenever you pour your cornmeal into that hot skillet, I love that crispy seasoning on it. I love to hear that. And here's my beef stew after the day nice and hearty and thick and I did not add any additional salt whenever I was letting this cook in the crock pot because you have to be careful with those seasoning packs they do have a lot of added sodium and I tasted it right there and it was perfect had it needed any more we would have just salted it on our plates I like to crumble my cornbread up and pour my beef stew over it and I would normally just eat this in a bowl like this, but that night my daughter is not crazy about beef stew, so I made some chicken nuggets, and then we all ended up eating a few of those too. And I made some just green beans on the side, and then more cornbread with butter on it. You couldn't beat that. This is a new recipe to me. It's called Million Dollar Chicken, and I have been wanting to try this. And you just start out by cutting up your green onions. You're going to use these actually in the mixture that you're going to put over your chicken and then additionally for a garnish. So I just started by chopping up two or three stalks of green onion. The mixture you're going to put over the top is a fourth a cup of mayonnaise. And then it says to use six ounces of softened cream cheese. So that's about three-fourths of a block and I just happened to have around that amount this wasn't necessarily exact but I had used some cream cheese for something else so I just finished it off then you're going to use about a half a cup of chopped up bacon I just used 
the crumbled bacon bits that we had. Then you're going to put in about half a cup of that green onion and then of course the cheese that I'm using I've been using out of a big bag of like a blend cheese that's fine it's cheddar and Colby Jack or Monterey one I can't remember but I'm putting in about three-fourths a cup of that you're just gonna mix that all together really well and I have some chicken prepped here. This was probably about three breasts. I am seasoning them with salt and pepper. I did not pound them out. They were, you know, I'd filleted them a little bit so they were all about the same um, thickness. Spread it all over the top of your chicken. Once you get it coated really good, you're just going to come back over with some more of your shredded cheese, about another three-fourths of a cup. And you're going to cook this in the oven, 350 degrees, for about 30 to 40 minutes. And while that's cooking, I started on a, another side that I've been wanting to try. And I have taken just a little over a tablespoon and then a large heaping tablespoon of honey. And I'm getting that warmed up in a skillet getting the butter all melted and the honey all heated up and I'm just adding in a bag of frozen corn and you're gonna get that uh, cooked down into this honey and butter and this is I think this is called honey butter skillet corn I am gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper And then once you get it cooked up a little bit, you're going to add in about two ounces of cream cheese. And I had some of this squeezable cream cheese left, so I just squirted in what I thought was about two ounces. It'll start to look kind of runny as the frozen corn, uh, you know, gets thawed and stuff, but you just keep cooking it and it will reduce down. I will leave you links to or recipes in the description box like I always do. Just know that sometimes I do vary from the sizes, but you know, just use your judgment in how much to use. And here comes our chicken out. This was so good and I do always check it with a meat thermometer. I'm pretty uh, conscious of that and I did make sure that it cooked up well above 165 and this chicken was delicious we all loved it I had some instant mashed potatoes and I just kind of loaded them up for us with some cheese and bacon then I added a little bit more bacon and green onions on top of that chicken the way that the mixture that you put on it already has some green onions and bacon in it it just gives it such a good flavor all the way through and that honey butter corn was so sweet and delicious we loved everything about this we needed this meal after eating all of the junk food and of course with New Year's coming up me and Maddie made Oreo balls we did not get any Oreo balls made before Christmas so we just made them for New Year's and you just take a pack of Oreos and I'm using my little um, mini food processor here to get them ground up into basically just crumbs it looks like dirt you just completely grind them down and this little four cup food processor will take about a row at a time I think there's about 12 cookies in one row in the Oreos and it'll handle about that at a time and it does a really good job on them if you don't have a food processor you can just use something and crush them up with a rolling pin or something heavy into that you're just going to add one eight ounce block of softened cream cheese and then i like to use my hand mixer to get it all incorporated you'll know that it's ready whenever it takes on like a shiny kind of look to it you'll see the cream cheese is fully incorporated at this point and now I'm spraying a baking sheet and I'm going to lay some parchment down I just spray that baking sheet so that my paper will stick and not move around on us when we're forming our balls and then we just take a couple tablespoons full 
roll it in a ball in our hand and set it on this sheet and we are going to be putting this sheet in the freezer the longer the better really a couple of hours is what we left this and that will just help when you go to dip them in your candy coating um, it just helps if they're nice and solid and frozen because that coating is going to be warm so we have put them in the freezer then we come back and I'm just using this white candy coating I'm going to put about half of that package in a microwave safe bowl and I have heated it thoroughly then you just start dipping your balls and I just put one in there and then cover it with the, the chocolate the white chocolate I'll take a fork and let any extra just kind of dribble off and very carefully lay it back on the parchment paper. And you have to work quick with these because you don't want them to get soft. It'll mess up your chocolate. That's why I just heated half of it was, you know, just in case. I didn't want that chocolate to get off into my white wanted to keep them looking pretty like a little snowballs or something so we have all of our balls covered there and then I took a little bit more of that white chocolate candy coating and I just put some blue food coloring in it this was after Christmas and we just wanted to do something to it and I said well let's just do blue so we just drizzled that blue over the top Y'all know, if you've watched any of my videos, I'm not good at making things pretty, but I thought they turned out okay. They tasted delicious, and we're still eating on them. Friends, I thank you so much for watching. I loved over the holidays. I got so many messages from you all where you were making some of the things that I've shown on my channel here. And that just tickled me to death that your family got to enjoy those dishes as well. I'm so glad to be back for another new year. I'll have a grocery haul for you on Wednesday and another what's for dinner next Sunday. And as always, until then, I send you love from my kitchen.